So the last several big knives that I've tried to make have all completely failed. But this time, I have a bigger oven. So with that being said, uh, well. I don't know why I'm doing it this way when I have a bandsaw. That thing is like the loudest tool ever. I always try and like to use the contact wheel for profiling because it's a lot more efficient. It doesn't take near as much power to run. It makes your belts last longer. It runs cooler and it also makes your platen last a lot longer. <laughs> have the right size drill bit for these. These are really rough grinds and I'm just gonna leave them that way. I usually take it farther than this pre-heat treatment, but I always have to go back to the grinder and do a lot of grinding anyway, so I might as well just leave them fairly rough and just finish it up after heat treating. What I need to do here is uh, preheat the oven. This thing takes about an hour to heat up and that's okay, I got time to kill. But another problem that I have is that my quench tank I also don't have enough Parks 50 to heat treat this. This is 1084, so I'm gonna have to go back and use canola oil because this stuff costs like $60 a gallon and I'd have to order two more gallons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use canola oil, which I have access to. 
Alrighty, about the quench tank. I just had an idea. Hmm. That should work. All right, time for the first normalization cycle. What's hot? This will come up to 1575 or so, then we'll bring it out, let it cool and still air. And normalization cycle number two at 1400 degrees. And the last normalization cycle at 1200. Just uh, preheating the oil here. This is uh, kind of sketchy. Hopefully I got enough room there for the uh, blade to go in without the oil overflowing. That was awkward. All right, only lost about 100 degrees there. Let it be said, a dollar store bake pan isn't just for baking bread. Got to practice here. This is where I failed last time. 1475, we can quench it whenever we want. We gotta get this into the oven as fast as possible. It's the next day, got the blade all tempered up. So, let's get on with the video. First thing I gotta do is straighten a warp. I don't know what it is, but every time I quench a blade and the entire handle doesn't go into the oil, like this one, it always warps where the oil line is. Vice is coming, coming loose. Ah. Oh yeah, perfectly flat. Nice. Perfect. You always say perfect, that way in case anybody else is listening, they're like, man, that guy's good. I've been down here for like an hour and all I've done is straighten this. Hopefully uh, I don't ruin it. So I know I'm gonna get questions about this, but basically this is just a piece of, uh, I don't know, quarter inch plate, and we clamped it to our tool rest or work rest, whatever you wanna call it. And then we can take our blade and just uh, keep the flat surface on the tool rest and drag it along the contact wheel and we can get a pretty good uh, false edge or swedge or whatever you wanna call it doing that. So uh, I'm gonna try something. I did a test piece. I think it turned out okay. I really wanna do it on this knife, but there's a really good chance that I could completely ruin this.
ask you. Um, Because this won't fit in my uh, acid tank, I'm gonna have to rub it on by hand. Full strength here. Ah, ah, ah! It's not seeping in. Oh my gosh! It's eating through the glove. Just kidding. Oops. Yeah, I need it darker than that for sure. Well, oh, this might work. What happens when they get in a hurry? Important. Day two. Actually, it's uh. I think it's day three. I'm gonna go ahead and put the secondary bevel on now and get it semi-sharp. This is kind of risky to do, but if I screw up anything putting the secondary bevels on, I can at least fix it now. If I have the handles on, it's much harder to fix. And I'm gonna do that with this sharpening stone. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna use my grinder. This is a 220. Tries act. This is the equivalent of a 600. Now all we gotta do is protect ourselves. Alright, now it's time for the loudest tool ever. If you can do that, your pieces are probably pretty flat. So now we're just about ready for glue up. All we gotta do now is rough up this area on the tang of the knife and we should be ready for glue up. I'm using alcohol, rubbing alcohol, alcohol, rubbing alcohol.
my fingers are shiny tomorrow, you'll know why. I mean, seriously, you cannot wipe too much. It's usually a uh, pretty good life advice too. It is day number four. And this is a day I've been waiting for. You know, I really didn't want this to turn into a bad rhyme video. So I took this inside last night and let it cure because it was very cold out here and your epoxy will not set properly if it's cold out. Ask me how I know. Yep, that stuff works pretty good. So because this is like super, super, super dusty, even with a vacuum and dust collection somewhat, uh, I'm gonna have to switch over to the GoPro because I really don't want this camera to get ruined. Well, I say, 
You can't have too much fun. Well, I say... I got nothing.